I'd like to start by saying welcome and congratulations on your acceptance to CSW. While we're bummed that we can't welcome you to campus, we hope that this online student panel can give you a glimpse into student life, leadership, and culture at CSW. Uh, my name is Jordan Clark, and I'm the Director of Community Programs for Equity and Inclusion. Uh, my job uh, primarily is to work on student leadership programming, uh, help organize affinity and alliance groups, uh, work on all school diversity, equity, and inclusion programming. Um, I also live on campus and work as a dorm parent, uh, coach basketball, uh, teach history, and I'm also a graduate of CSW from the class of 2005. A quick note, uh, we're recording tonight's web webcast for those that can't tune in live, which is why we aren't having guests share their video or audio with us. We've had about 25 questions submitted in advance, so we'll work through those and we'll incorporate any questions you have uh, via the Q&A feature tonight. You can ask questions anonymously if you prefer by ticking the little Ask Anonymously box before submitting your questions. You can also upvote questions by giving a thumbs up to that question. Um, and we'll try to prioritize the, the questions that rise to the top. Uh, we'll plan to wrap up tonight around 9 p.m. If we haven't gotten to your question, please feel free to email me at jclark at csw.org and that will pop up into the chat box for you. Now, without further ado, uh, the reason why you're all here, um, I want to introduce our students that will be answering your questions. Ryan, Jack, Fadilla, Jason, and Ruby. Um, I'm going to give them a moment to introduce themselves and then we'll jump right into the questions. Ryan, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Ryan. I'm a freshman and day student from Roslindale, Massachusetts, and my main interests are theater, music, and science, and I also participate in soccer. Thank you. Jack, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Jack. Uh, I'm a sophomore, and I'm from Wellesley, Massachusetts. I use he, him, his pronouns, and some of my interests at CSW are math, basketball, coding, and art. And I also serve as one of the two um, grade representatives for the sophomore class on A board, which is sort of like our student run government committee. Thank you. Uh, Fadilla, you are up. Hi, my name's Fadilla. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a sophomore. From New Jersey, which is an affinity. Thank you, Fadilla. Uh, Jason, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm a senior and a day student from Arlington, Massachusetts. A few things I'm involved with at CSW are I'm on the soccer team, the robotics team, and the ultimate frisbee team. And Ruby, please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Ruby. I'm a senior and a day student from Somerville, Massachusetts. And a few things that I really love being involved with at CSW are, um, first of all, dance. I really, really love. And I'm also involved in our school's chapter of Junior State of America, which is a political debate group that also Jason and Fadilla are involved with. And I'm also really proud to be one of CSW's student representatives on the Board of Trustees. Awesome, thank you so much for introducing yourselves. Uh, so let's jump right into the questions. What classes are you currently taking? Who would like to start us off? Jack, tell us about your classes. Uh, yeah, I'm currently taking Spanish 2, Photography 2, and STEAM 2. Uh, and STEAM is the 10th grade required science class at CSW. And it mostly consists of like coding with Python, uh, physics, and engineering. Awesome, thanks. Ryan, what classes are you taking? Um, I'm taking Geometry, Bioconnections, which is one of the required um, ninth grade science programs and moving yoga dance. Awesome, thank you. Jason, tell us about your classes. So currently I'm taking Calc C, Applied Language Workshop, and Modern Middle East. And Applied Language Workshop is a class where 
we are given the opportunity to study any language we want in any way that we want. Um, so currently my phone is set to be in Russian and my computer is set to be in Spanish. I'm just testing out, seeing what it's like to try to live with a different language. Awesome. Uh, Ruby, what classes are you taking? Right now, I am taking a Latinx literature class, which I really love. We're focusing on all different types of literature, but from one um, umbrella of culture. I'm taking elementary functions, and I am taking um, a big book class where we dive really deep into John Milton's Paradise Lost. Awesome, thank you. Fadilla, what classes are you taking? Currently, I'm taking French too. Um, U USO content writing and photo one. Awesome, thank you. So our next question is, what three words would you use to describe the CSW community? So what are, what are three words that you would use to describe CSW? Jason. Um, so, the first word that I would choose, this is a hard one, um, would be open, because I think that at CSW, there's always opportunities to try new things, meet new people, and it's just like a really open community for that. And I think artistic, um, we're just at the school, again, there's so much openness and support for trying um, so many new things, whether it be art or not art, um, but especially in the arts, visual or active artistic would be my second word. And then the third one would be, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to use this, but community. I think just to describe the community, it'd be, or maybe like united. I think that's a little better than community, but um, it really, people, there's a sense of togetherness on campus amongst everyone. I think that's a good way to describe it. Awesome. Ruby, what are three words that you would use? First, I would say passionate because from the students to the teachers, like everybody has something, everybody knows that what they're interested in is an interest of the entire community. And there's, it's really valued that everybody speaks up and shares what they love. And so I get to hear a lot of that and everybody expressing themselves in their own way is really welcomed and supported. And for me, that even translates into the classroom in a really positive way, because when it's a subject that I don't think of as my usual, like my thing, um, last mod I was taking trigonometry, which I don't think of myself as like necessarily a math person, but my teacher would just get so excited, like doing a proof and be like, isn't that awesome? Like you could tell her enthusiasm, her passion coming to her teaching and that just really rubs off on us as students. So passionate for sure. Then I would say um, engaged because there's so many different ways and opportunities for people to get involved, students and teachers and all the happenings of school, even like outside of the classroom with our events and everything. And on a logistical level, as I said, I'm on the board, which is an amazing way to engage. Everybody wants to contribute to the running of the school, which I think is amazing. And finally, innovative, I'd say, because we're even with this Griff Online situation, right? Like an obstacle comes up and we come together as a community to think about how to move past it and continue to innovate. Awesome, thank you, Ruby. Uh, Jack, what are three words that you would use? Uh, first of all, I would say inviting because you're always sort of like encouraged by a lot of different people within the community to try new things or take advantage of opportunities around campus. Um, and then also I'd say spirited um, a lot of the, the community is really um, great at like supporting each other through whatever we're doing, whether that be like a sports uh, game, a dance or musical performance, or even if it's just like an art show. Uh, awesome. And then I guess the third word, I would say close. Um, you know, because of the mod system, we have like a lot of new and different classes all the time. And so we're with a lot of different people. And so because of that, you really get to sort of learn, or I guess, um, become friends and get to know a lot of different people, like almost everyone in your grade. Awesome, thanks, Jack. Uh, so our next question is, how has Griff Online been? Um, so as Ruby said, um, we've moved our classes online. Um, 
due to um, the realities of the current situation that we're facing. Um, so for the past two weeks, teachers have uh, found ways to move their classes from what we traditionally do to trying to do them online. And we just finished our first week of those. Um, so are there any students who are interested in telling us a little bit about how that has gone so far? Fadilla. So overall, the whole experience has been pretty positive for me. Um, the teachers have been there every step of the way, even though it was new for them, like they were constantly just like giving us reassurance and being really supportive of like different family situations and not being too tough on us and just like provide that we could do and overall just be like really supportive and it felt like I never really left a classroom in terms of support yeah awesome thank you uh ruby would you like to add yeah um i really appreciate that even if we're not seeing each other in person and connecting that way we've everybody's made an effort to make it feel like we're still connected in the same ways so we really make good use of that breakout breakout group zoom function so that we can have nice intimate discussions and keep the the value that we have of like raising up everybody's voices in a class alive even online and just the other day i had a one-on-one -on -one zoom call with one of my teachers so that i could ask some specific individual questions and she was like of course you know like even though we don't have our usual um like office hours time that we do on campus they make room to really support each student where they need to be and it's been very even if we don't have our beautiful campus it's really still felt like a community, even online. Awesome, thank you. So our next question is, um, can you share a little bit about um, the advisory program and maybe uh, your relationship to your advisor? Um, is there somebody who's excited to talk a little bit about uh, advisory? Jason. All right, so I've been in two separate advisories um, in my time at CSW after my freshman year, my freshman year advisor left. Um, and um, I want to talk a little bit about the change. I was very much welcomed into my new advisory advisors advisory um, once I changed. And that place kind of felt just kind of a place where you can go, kind of relax get advice on like classes that you might are thinking about taking, classes that you are currently taking, and just kind of a place to talk with some of your peers, get to know people a little bit better, and just a great place to hang out. Awesome, thank you. Ryan, will you tell us a little bit about your advisory experience? Sure. Um, so I actually have two advisors at the moment. They combine two groups and it's been really nice actually having um, two advisors. This is the first year I've ever experienced an advisory, um, but I've had a really positive experience like being able to have an adult that I can see twice a week and talk to about any issues I might be having with classes or wanting to change something in my schedule. And also like we just have fun. We like We've played games and we've had snacks and celebrated birthdays and enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. Uh, Jack, will you tell us a little bit about advisory? Uh, yeah, and especially freshman year, it's really nice to just right off the bat have like a group of friends and an adult that you can rely on and trust. Um, and also like personally, my advisor, he really pushes me and everyone in my advisory to like try new things and he knows us really well. So he's sort of able to suggest that we get involved and um, like able to see what's on campus that fits our interests and see how we can get involved in something that we're interested in. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Fadilla, what's advisory like for you? Um, so me and my advisor have a really close relationship because we're both West African. And like, once I knew that, ever since like I was in ninth grade that kind of always excited me and that's kind of how we became so close um I'm really close to his family and he's really close to mine and so when I go home I'm able to like give him food and he um I know his daughters pretty well and I also like babysit them too so 
a really close connection. Awesome. Thank you, Fadilla. Uh, so our next question is, um, what is a D block or activity uh, that you really enjoy? Maybe what is your favorite D block or favorite activity? Jack. Yeah, my favorite D block activity is for sure uh, basketball. Uh, in fact, uh, the boys varsity basketball team, uh, we just won our division championship, which is pretty cool. Um, and so like the seasons are so much fun. There's a JV and a varsity team um, and it's like ensured that there's no cuts. So everyone, regardless of their skill level can make a team or they will make a team. Um, and the coaches on both teams are just great. And like, regardless of if you're JV or varsity, like a lot of us um, outside of basketball, we hang out and we have like a really big friend group and uh, the teams are just really close. And I, I remember one time uh, this year um, during a varsity practice, we actually ended early to go watch a, the end of a JV game. And one of the players on our JV team hit a game winning shot. And it was just so awesome. Like everybody on varsity was all cheering. Everybody was going crazy. And it's just a really awesome community. Awesome. Ryan, will you tell us a little bit about a uh, D block activity that you enjoy? Sure. Um, so I think my favorite D block is the spring musical. Um, it's my first year, so this is the first year I've been doing it, but I've had a really positive experience. We're doing it virtually, um, but we all got really creative and we've um, decided to kind of just choose our favorite scenes and monologues and songs from all different shows and just combine them and the, like the teamwork that's been in that I really enjoy especially in such a big community it's really great awesome thank you Jason tell us a little bit about uh, your favorite D block um I would definitely have to say that my favorite D block while I do enjoy all of them that I do would probably be the robotics team, um, which is a team that I've been on all of my years at CSW. And it's a great opportunity to learn so much about engineering, programming. It's a um, competitive robotics team also. So we go off to competitions with schools around the area and it's so just a great chance and opportunity to go out and see what it's like. And it's the reason, reason I want to study engineering in university. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Ruby, tell us a little bit about your favorite D block. Sure. So I really love, most of the year I'm in dance D blocks. Um, I love to dance and I really, really love the CSW dance program. Um, and it's not just like a regular, like sometimes we do have technique classes, but other times we have choreographer seminar where we develop as artists and choreographers and different things that focus on niche parts of dance, which I love. But I also want to take a sec to talk about um, the time that I created my own D-Block, which is an awesome opportunity that we have here at CSW. So any student can submit a proposal to teach their own class. So I did that. Um, and one of my passions is spoken word poetry. So I developed and designed a course along with a teacher advisor um, that could teach my peers about spoken word and slam poetry. Um, so I taught for five weeks. We, went, we met twice a week and it was an amazing experience for me to share my passion with my peers in a really formal setting and also for me to develop as a teacher and a leader. And so I had a great experience and I think hopefully Fadilla was actually in the class. Um, but everybody in the class seems to really love it as well. So that was definitely a highlight of my uh, D-Block experiences. Awesome. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, Fadilla, tell us a little bit about a D-Block that you really like. So I'm also on the team sport. I play volleyball during the fall. And this year was pretty special to me because I started off on JV but halfway through the season, they used me as a, a player for varsity. So that was just a whole new experience for me, playing on a whole different level with some of the girls. And being on varsity, like, at first I was super nervous because I was like, I'm not as good as these girls. Like, I'm not, like, they're going to judge me. But the whole time, like, they were all 
super, super, super supportive. And I remember we, I think it was like our championship game. Like I was so scared to play because I thought I was going to like mess up hitting the ball. But like um, one of the girls next to me, she was like, don't worry, you got this. Even if you mess up, like it's fine. You're doing great. And just having that support the whole time, like really made me love the sport even more. Thank you, Fadilla. So our next question is, how did you feel when you first became a student at CSW? How have you changed and how have you grown? Uh, so would somebody like to, to think about your first few days at CSW, kind of how you felt and then ways in which you think you've grown over your time at CSW? And for some of us, that's a few months. For some, that's a few years. So um, feel free to, to share any piece of that. Fadilla? So for me, in middle school, I was like really shy. Like I was scared of the upperclassmen in my school and I didn't really stand out in any way. And coming to CSW, I was like kind of, okay, like this is my moment to be somebody different and just like be out there more. And the first few weeks were a little bit rough because I guess I didn't really know how to like make new friends or just step out of my comfort zone. But since I'm a boarding student, a lot of the older girls in the dorm really helped me make like make me feel more comfortable into the community and just like help me find my shell more. And through that, I kind of just became more confident and more willing to like go and to join more clubs and like even try for elected positions this year and just do more things on campus, which I couldn't say like I would even think of doing like two years ago, just being a prominent person on campus more. Thank you, Fadilla. Jack, would you like to uh, answer that question? Uh, yeah, very similarly to Fadilla, actually, I was pretty shy in middle school. Uh, and this year I ran for a uh, student government position. And in doing that, I had to give a speech in front of my entire grade, uh, which was very nerve wracking. But um, I, I could have never seen myself doing that two years ago. And I think just my time at CSW uh, and being always like encouraged every day in class by my teachers to speak up has really like given me more confidence. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Ryan, would you like to answer the question? Sure. Um, so I honestly felt a little bit nervous because I came from a really small school. So CSW was like such a big community and I was a little like nervous to make friends and meet new people. Um, and I could not have been more welcomed. Like everybody was waiting to meet. It was like everybody, um, it didn't matter what their grade was, whether they were a teacher, they were just so welcoming. And I think I, it's definitely helped me to grow because you're invited to try so many new things and meet so many new people that you end up becoming more confident. And definitely for me, I've become more confident in um, giving my voice and meeting new people. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Ruby? I have a little bit of a different take on this question because I've always been a bit of a naturally outgoing person, honestly. And I really, Jordan's smiling because he knows me well. Um, but I honestly believe that over my time at CSW, I've become a better listener and a better collaborator because CSW really fosters collaboration and shows you how to do that and how that's done in a classroom setting and at, um, like at assemblies with presentations that go on and you see how different groups function and how events happen and you're really let in to see how the behind the scenes of things work at the school and the only way all that happens is collaboration and I've learned to take that on for myself and really know that to be the, the best leader best learner that I can be listening is like a big part of that and just one example of how I feel like as a senior I've taken that into action and in how I do things is um, so last year I was elected, at the end of the year, I was elected to be this year's um, head of the Jewish Culture Club. And I was starting my position and I was like, okay, how am I gonna take this on and do this 
the best that I can. And in that, I was like, I'm going to make new positions. So I've created a couple of other positions in addition to just head of the club and have other students working with me on this and have it be a collaborative po process where I could have, and maybe freshman year me would have just been like, oh, I'll just do it all myself. Like, I feel like I've really learned that to be my best self, I need to work with others. I really need to listen to others. And so that's how I've grown. Awesome. So a question along the same lines. Um, uh, what did the school do to help you transition to CSW? Um, so you talked a little bit about kind of how you felt coming in. What were some of the ways in which CSW helped you transition into the new community? I think there were two um, really important things that helped at least me transition into this community, which was one that we already talked about a little bit before, but the advisory group just coming in right at the beginning and already being connected to a group of students and a teacher who were there to support and help you um, was a really great thing to have right off the beginning. And then another thing that I did, um, it was the first mod of my freshman year, was the soccer team. And also just that being able to be integrated into this group of people right from the beginning. Everyone was always so welcoming. Um, and I thought that was a really good way to start and become integrated into the CSW community. Thank you. Uh, Ruby, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, your experience and how the school helped you transition? Mm -hmm. um, just like Jason, one of the really helpful aspects of being a new student at CSW is the activities that we have and the way they embrace you. So for me, that was dance. And one of the fall productions that we have every year at CSW is this one-on-one -on -one show where an upperclassman is paired with a new student and they collaborate together to create a solo or a duet or even a trio sometimes but like a very small group new work of choreography um, that is then shared with the community and this all happens in the first week in the sorry in the first month um, of the school year so I was paired with a couple of upperclassmen and together we created new choreography and it made me really close with them through that process and then just the rehearsal time with other students immediately gave me a friend group and they gave me the confidence to be like oh my my you know creativity is really valued in this community right off the bat so that was really helpful for me in the beginning of my time at csw awesome thank you uh ryan would you like to add so i think the amazing that really um helped me was my peer mentor group, um, which uh, every freshman is put into a group of other freshmen and a couple of older students for the first two mods. And actually, uh, Madilla was one of my um, peer mentors. And I definitely, I felt so comfortable, especially that was helping me like get to know um, my peers, like my other freshmen, but especially also the older students. And they would, it's kind of like a younger advisory. Like I would um, be able to ask them questions about future classes I wanted to take and maybe where a class was that I was trying to get to. And it definitely helped me feel welcomed and helped me get acclimated to the community. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so we have another question. Um, one of the things that CSW is well known for is this arts program and how strong it is. Um, uh, a person is wondering how strong are the maths and science classes? Um, do people have some experience in their math or science class um, that they'd like to, to share? Um, so I'm someone who really enjoys my math and science classes, just like as a person and especially at CSW. Um, our calculus class went over three mods and it was not only a really enjoyable class but I got to know a lot of people in my class really well and one of the things that's kind of like a cornerstone is of that class were these problem sets that you would do in groups and sometimes it'd be the same group and sometimes it'd be switch up but um, I think CSW takes a good look at kind of the dynamics of these math and science classes and um, it does a good job of teaching you the information in an interesting and engaging way. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Fadilla, would you like to add? Yeah, so 
coming in, like, I did not like math or science at all. Like, I would have said my strong suits were history and English. But just like having math classes and like teachers who explained material really well and had tests that reflected material that we actually went over was really like helpful for me. And it was a healthy challenge as well, because I'm not going to sit here and say like, it was a breeze. Like I had to like, the teachers really made sure like you had to work for your grade and just like always like be on top of your stuff. And it was really encouraging for me as well because it gave me kind of a new challenge. And like looking back at it now, it's kind of funny to me because like building my junior year schedule, I'm trying to put in more math and science classes rather than like English and history that like I was more interested like before I came. So just seeing how that totally like flipped around and changed was, I like, I was kind of surprised. I was like, whoa. Thank you, Fadilla. Uh, Ruby, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about specifically science, um, because just to show like CSW really does also care about the math and sciences and invests. Um, we have this amazing trip. The marine biology course um, is something that I was in last spring. And you spend the first half of the mod, we spend just like studying marine biology in the classroom. But then the second half, we went out and we lived on an island off the coast of Maine for two weeks and designed from start to finish our own research projects to do in the intertidal zone on something that we had, you know, researched ahead of time and then gone to the islands to conduct our own research projects, like hands on, at, like in the ocean. It was just amazing. Um, and you can see like even now how passionate I am just talking about it. It was an incredible experience to get hands on with science that I would recommend for anyone. It was so fun and so interesting. And I learned a lot. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, Jack, go ahead. Uh, yeah, going into CSW, uh, math was by far my favorite subject. And I would still to this day say that it, it still is. Um, but I didn't really love science coming into, coming into CSW. Um, and actually I've sort of developed to, to love the science program that we have at CSW and love sciences just in general. Uh, like the facility that we have, the Garthway is in my opinion, the nicest building at CSW. It's really like peaceful. There's a pond in the middle of it, which is really nice. Um, and like the, the teachers that teach in the science department are all really energetic and they're, they're just great teachers. Uh, and so next year, I'm not required to take any science classes, but I'm planning on taking two just because the science department is so strong. Thank you, Jack. Uh, so we have another question. Um, is it easy to pursue multiple interests? Like if you want to do theater and robotics and dance and soccer, um, is it easy to, to kind of balance out your interests um, while you're building your schedule and while you're going through each year? I would say definitely because I personally have a lot of interests and that's why one of the reasons why I thought CSW was a perfect fit for me was because of the mod system. You're able to choose so many different classes that you're interested in and they can be like across the board every subject in a year and that's like amazing. Um, so yeah, I'd say it's pretty pretty easy. The only hard part is that there are so many interesting classes that it's really hard to know. But, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Fadilla, would you like to answer that question? I would say yes, definitely. It's possible. It just ultimately comes down to you as a person and your worth work ethic. Because um, this year, I did volleyball. I also participated in like the dance community a little bit and doing dance concert and preparing for that. Um, and I also do an extracurricular outside of school that doesn't, um, that's not part of like, it's not a school club, like it's a totally different program. Um, and I felt like, and also like leadership opportunities that I have like on campus, but balancing that and like figuring out how I work and like my schedule, I've been able to do that and just having the right resources around me too. Awesome. Uh, Jason, go ahead. So I would also agree that it's not um, too difficult to try tons of different things. 
I would say, however, that there are just some things that will be happening at the same time and that sometimes you have to make a decision about that. And it just depends on what's happening when. But with the variety of clubs, D blocks, classes, and all the different interests that are represented in those opportunities, it's definitely not impossible to do all the things that you want to do and try all the things you want to try at CSW. Thank you, Jason. Um, so our next question is, I'm going to combine two that are similar. Um, how easy uh, would you say is it to make new friends and where have you made your closest friends at CSW? Ooh, quick answers. Uh, go ahead, Ruby. Okay, I think it's really easy to make friends at CSW because there's many factors to this, but I think it's really helpful that our classes are small, so you're, you have no choice but to get to know everyone in every class that you take, and the classes rotate frequently, so you make, an, you make really great friends really quickly because you spend an hour and a half with them every day for six weeks, but then you switch to a new group of people, so you get to hold on to those friends, and you're introduced to a new group of people, and then we have like tons of clubs that are like small groups of people um, and committees and clubs. And so you're constantly like in the mix of different grades, different like what might be seen as in other environments, different like interest groups of different types of people are constantly mixed up. And so you get to know all different types of people and keep moving with them. And then of course, if there's some place where you sort of stay and find your home within the school that can become your really really good friends so for me as i mentioned earlier dance has been a place where i've found my closest friends um but that's not to say like i don't have friends in every other interest group of school it just happens that way you can't avoid it so awesome uh fadilla would you like to answer the question so um prior to coming to csw i was part of a program called new jersey seeds which helps um kids from New Jersey go into independent private schools. And NCSW, especially the boarding community, there um, was already a pretty big group of New Jersey Seeds kids that came through the program. And like the first day people were like, hey, you're from Seeds. And I was like, yeah, I am. And we were able to form like this pretty big close group. And even outside of that, just like the boarding community itself, that's where I find most of my closest friends in the dorm. I live in the Warren dorm and the Warren girls, they're like my family. So I've created bonds within that. And like also the trap below boys, like my closest guy friends are in trap. So just in within the boarding community, I would say like you tend to build like some really tight bonds. Awesome. Thank you, Fadilla. All right, we're going to move on to another question. Um, ooh, this one is near and dear to my heart. Uh, how do you feel CSW fosters an inclusive community? Um, can you talk a little bit about affinity and alliance groups? Fadilla, go ahead. So I've always been pretty involved with um, just social justice at CSW and affinity and alliance groups. I co-head of Circle of Sisters and um, I'm also part of USC, which is United Students of Color. I don't know, like having like people like Jordan on campus, adults who also feel really deeply about social justice too, makes me just want to like voice how I feel and then create a path for like other people to share how they feel and like to educate people on campus as well. Thank you. Ruby, go ahead. I mentioned earlier um, the Jewish Culture Club, but I just want to explain a little bit about how that really looks on campus. So we meet um, weekly and it's a space that everybody knows exists and everybody knows like for this club specifically, it's open to anybody of any identity. So the role of these clubs or like Jewish culture clubs specifically I'll speak for 
is to make room for people who do identify with this identity, but also to invite people in who just want to like learn about someone else's culture. And we've had plenty of people come in who are not Jewish at all, but just interested in like, well, what's going on here? And some people who know that Judaism is a small part of their heritage, but what is more, what is that really about? Learn more about that. So it plays that role of um, being a place for people of similar identities to come together and also educating others about it. And also it's a space that oftentimes we just have drop in people who don't even come to the club regularly, but something came up in their lives, maybe at school, maybe outside of school that they feel that is sort of related to their Jewish identity. And it's a place for them to talk about that. And we have these spaces on campus that really make it feel feel safe and inclusive, um, even for minority groups. So I would say CSW is, uh, has a very diverse community. Um, I have two moms, so finding a diverse and accepting community was really important to me. And CSW wound up being perfect. Like um, there are so many affinity groups and there's diversity day where it's just a day to celebrate all different cultures and identities and you just get to learn about everybody and um, yeah I guess also the community is already so diverse that you can just be learning about so many different new cultures and identities like every day like just get to know somebody new somebody different from you maybe and you just learn a whole lot. Awesome thank you Ryan. Um... And I'd be remiss if I didn't get a chance to add that all of our affinity and alliance groups are, are student initiated. Uh, so students have brought those to the attention of the diversity, equity and inclusion office. And we've worked with them to create those groups, find places for them to meet and build them into our schedule. And each group has an adult advisor to help support that group also. All right, so our next question is, what do you think the benefits of having a mod system are opposed to a more traditional um, schedule? Um, I would say definitely uh, the fact that you can try things much more often um, and also really places like an emphasis on the quality of the classes because you know you only have six weeks to learn the material so you really have to be like focused and make sure you get the most out of every class. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Jason, go ahead. Um, I think one of the greatest benefits of this mod system is the ability to try so many different things um, in such a short period of time where each year you're taking, um, well, six by six, that'd be 36, but then a couple of multi-mod classes, but still so many different classes, oh wait, six, Never mind. Um, so that's not how many classes. It's three times six, uh, 18. But still, um, so many different classes in so many different subjects. Like for me, this year I took um, a photog. I'm taking photography classes, um, calculus, physics, um, along with uh, Alfred Hitchcock films class. There's just such a large variety of what you can study and what you can learn about. So it's just um, really great to have. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I have another question. Um, where do you find joy? Where is there laughter on campus? Like what, where are there moments that you, you have those experiences? Fadilla, go ahead. For me, it would be dinner and just at the dining hall like after a long day just right before study hall for the borders like that's kind of like the time I get to spend most with my friends um both day and boarding because day students like to stay behind and do some extracurriculars and it's just a time to like kind of like debrief but like especially like my table at dinner like Jordan can attest to this we're always like talking and laughing and just being loud and that's honestly like one of the days like my part of the day that I look forward to. So definitely dinner. Awesome. Uh, Jack, would you like to tell us uh, your answer to that question? Uh, yeah, uh, also like during lunch, um, I get to hang out with a lot of my friends uh, and our lunch period is an hour every day. So there's like, it's not really rushed. Like at my middle school, it was really rushed. You had to eat really quickly and then get to your next class. There's a lot of like downtime during lunch to just like socialize and I find that's really nice. Um, also at advisory, 
uh, my advisor, my advisory, um, like everybody there, we always crack jokes during advisory, like we're really close with each other. Uh, and then also during assembly, we have about an hour and a half, I think, of assembly every week. Um, and we usually uh, learn about like new things going on at the school. Uh, people will talk about clubs that are going on, but occasionally we'll like play a game or there will be some sort of like humorous presentation. And uh, that's also like one of my highlights of the week. Definitely the music wing. Um, after class, after my last class, I go there every day to meet my friends and people are always playing music in the different rooms and we just talk and do homework there. It's a really relaxing place. There are some great benches. It's really nice. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, so another question is, um, I've heard the term busy work or no busy work used by many private schools. Um, what does that mean to you? And how would you describe the kind of homework you receive at CSW? I think a great example of this whole no busy work thing is specifically in like, I could honestly find an example in um, in every class I take. I personally hate busy work. So I can happily say that CSW does not really, really works on not um, assigning any of that. But for like a specific example in language classes, I take Spanish this year. I was in um, Spanish five, I think. Um, and it's pretty easy to give in language classes like a sheet where you like fin fill in the rest of the sentence or like circle the right conjugation of the verb. But that was not the case. I was in a um, current events in Latin American countries class. And our homework on most nights was like, go watch the news from a Latin American country and like take notes and like work on how you can like share that information with the rest of the class or, um, or like write your own um, assessment or like opinion paper in Spanish on a current event that's happening. Like everything feels extremely relevant to, to the topic that you're learning and and giving you like real life skills of how to talk about relevant things in a language or use relevant skills and put them into action already, even though we're still in the classroom. So for me, um, I've seen that a lot of my classes um, tend to be focused on discussion. So then our homework will be very focused on preparing for said discussion in class. So whether it be the Cold War history class I was taking where we had um, a history of the Cold War textbook that we would skim or read, read and take notes on um, for, and then discuss what we read in class or the Hitchcock films class where we would watch um, parts of the film for homework, take notes on that and then discuss it on class. It's really preparing you um, for the class discussions um, and being ready for all of that. Awesome. So our next question is, uh, what's a class that you really enjoyed? Like what has been your favorite class so far at CSW and why was that class meaningful to you? Uh, Jack, go ahead. Uh, my favorite class was definitely Algebra 2. Uh, I took that earlier this year. And the reason why it was so great was because of my teacher, Rashid. Uh, he's like by far one of my favorite teachers at the school. He's so like young, energetic, and he always like really tries to incorporate interesting and relevant things into our lessons. Like for example, I remember um, one time we were like comparing two NBA players' statistics to see um, like analytically which one was the better player. Uh, another time we were um, like talking about uh, algebra two and how it relates to coding. And so we had to predict what Apple stock would look like in five years in coding. And that was really cool. So that was my favorite class. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, what's a class that you've really enjoyed so far? Definitely African Ethics of the Oral Tradition was probably my favorite. Um, it was great. Like we read so many um, African Ethics and we learned kind of themes that you find in a lot of them, like specifically like the number seven is really common. Um, and it was also really interactive. Like um, we made our hero's journey paper. So we wrote like the journey that a hero takes and what determines a hero and like how you qualify as a hero. Um, and at 
the end, we actually had um, another teacher who is a griot come in and tell us a story. And he brought in drums and other instruments, and we got to um, dance, and it was really fun. Uh, Jason, uh, what's a class that you have enjoyed? All right, so I'm a math and science guy. However, my favorite class that I've taken at CSW has to have been U.S. Constitution, which is a history class. And my favorite part about this class is that we did mock Supreme Court cases in the class. And I thought it was just a really great way um, to, one, just learn about um, the Constitution in how it's applied to law today, um, and also just get a new look on how you learn history and what it's all about. So that has to be by far my favorite class. Awesome, thank you. Uh, can you uh, comment on student support uh, for homework? Um, as you're going through your classes, what, what supports are there for you um, as you go through uh, Ruby? So the teachers really make it clear that I've had this conversation with many or many teachers set this as sort of like an expectation at the beginning of class of like you have your peers and you have your teachers and you have other resources at CSW and they really want you to know that getting help is not a bad thing right like getting support with your homework or anything is is like part of being a good student and self-advocacy is part of being a good student. And when they say like, go to your peers, it's not just like, yeah, okay. It's like, I've had friends be like, no, like, of course I'll help you with that. And even like, I have some, you know, trades with my friends where it's like, okay, like I'll give you some edits and review, um, revision notes on your English paper. If you help me go over like this specific challenge problem on my elementary functions homework, like, right? Like people want to have that collaborative process even outside the classroom, even if we're not in the same class. Um, and then there's supports like there's um, Math Cube at lunch, which is a space where students can go consistently um, to get support on math work or, or during the D block time slot. Um, I'm also a peer editor for our school's writing center called Writing Hub, which is open to students many times throughout the week to get support on, um, on writing in any class. And there's like things like that where it's like set blocks and then just the culture of like going to your teacher during office hours or your advisor and getting that support is really valued. Awesome. Thank you. Um, what is the relationship between day and boarding students? Fadilla. Is my audio better now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. So um, I have a lot of day student friends on campus as well. And my relationship with them is pretty strong. Like me and Ruby, we hang out all the time after school. And like there have been like various points where I've gone over to her house, I've slept over. So, and I have like connections with people like that on campus, like a lot. <laughs> um, and day students are like super kind and like they, make sure that they're there for boarders with anything that they need off campus. So it's pretty tight knit too. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, Jack, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, I'd say that boarders and day students definitely interact with each other a lot. I know uh, I'm a day student and two of my closest friends are boarding students. And that doesn't really like, um, stop us from hanging out outside of school. Like they've come and slept over at my house. So like, I guess, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ruby, go ahead. On the flip side of what Fadilla said, <laughs> I've also slept over in her dorm on multiple occasions. And like, well, like let's, sometimes I'll just like stay for dinner um, just to spend more time with my boarding friends. But there's also just because CSW knows and is conscious and makes a like proactive effort to have like day and boarding communities be like part of one there's many like events that happen later in the evening so it's not like well after 4 30 well, we don't talk to each other anymore like it's not like that like day students stay late all the time and boarding students come off campus um 
And even as a day student, sometimes I'll participate in weekend activities that we have because they're just great activities and it's more time to spend with the school, with my school friends, so. Awesome, thank you. Um, so our next question is, uh, what are some events that happen throughout the year that you look forward to that, that get you excited that, that happen each year that you, you uh, look forward to? Fadilla, go ahead. So um, some major events that are pretty important and exciting for me would be first throughout the year, um, All Borders Weekend, which is just like a weekend where all it happens within like the second week of new students coming and all the borders are on campus and we there's a day where we um it's just like competitions between the dorms and then there's like this huge like target run and it was pretty fun and then another thing that like i usually look forward to is like dances at other schools because it's like a chance to like get to know people at other schools and that's how I built like connections with people um, throughout the independent schools in Massachusetts and like awesome. different conferences too. Thank you Fadilla. Uh, Jason go ahead. So one of my favorite events definitely has to be Evening of the Arts. Um, I really love all of the end of the mod art shows where you can go and see all the art that all of the students have done um, for that mod and evening of the arts just seems like that but on a bigger scale and it's just so great to see um, what your fellow students and peers have been up to and doing um, this year or this mod and it's just a really enjoyable event to go and see. Awesome. Ruby, go ahead. I have to bring up boat dance because it's our typical like big formal dance of the year. Um, historically, CSW doesn't do a traditional form of prom. Um, I actually wrote an English paper on the whole history of prom at CSW, which to me is really interesting and fascinating. And sort of what it comes down to is the major reasons we don't do it is because of those like traditional high school social structures and dynamics that aren't so healthy. Um, we do leave that out of our community and so that translates to the type of events we have and it leaves us with boat dance which is super fun we all go out on a yacht on Boston Harbor at the end of the year all grades every year and some people will wear like a classic ball gown situation or last year I wore like a jumpsuit situation like people like it's another I just feel like it's where people's quirkiness of the CSW community gets translated into like a one of those like kind of glamorous just social events and it's where we always have fun um and it's like CSW classic is boat dance, so I have to bring it up. Awesome, thank you. Um, so in thinking about when you uh, were starting to come to CSW, what do you wish you had known um, that you know now? So thinking back, what is a piece of information that you think would have been really helpful for you to know uh, as you were coming to CSW? Um, I guess definitely like, don't be afraid to like self-advocate for yourself because um, I, I was a little nervous about that, but once I kind of got into the community and I got um, more confident within, I definitely felt more comfortable like talking to my teachers and talking to my friends and getting help where I needed it and interacting with like everybody because everybody's so welcoming so definitely like don't be afraid to just like like cannonball don't just like you can just run into the community and they will accept you with like a huge hug awesome thank you uh fadilla go ahead um don't be afraid to be challenged or pushed out of your comfort zone um especially like being challenged in terms of different opinions people might have and like where you run into like situations where you and a person might not agree but instead like instead of being defensive about it like learning to listen to another opinion and just like finding confidence within yourself to like be able to like fight for your own opinions or just be open and aware which ultimately makes you like a stronger person 
Awesome. Uh, Ruby, go ahead. I would say anything that you don't already see that CSW has, you have the opportunity to create it and make it happen. As I said, I created the spoken word poetry D block class because that's a thing that we can do here. Um, and I have tons of friends who've like founded student clubs and student organizations. You can make what you want in this community and there's the avenues and the support for you to do that and not just be 100% out on your own, right? Like you'll get a teacher to support you and, and guide you a little bit, but you can bring to this community whatever you feel would, would, would make us stronger or whatever would feel help you feel better represented. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, another question. Um, how much time do you usually spend on homework each night? Uh, I would say it depends on the mod and how difficult my classes are. Um, there have been times when I've only had like 30 minutes of homework a night, but it's usually not like that. Uh, it's usually, I would say about two hours of homework a night. The most I've ever had is like three or three and a half. Um, but yeah, usually about two hours. So, yeah, I agree. Like, it just depends on the mod. Um, like, some classes, you don't get any. Um, but I would say probably on average, I've had about two hours. But um, when I've had more than that, there's definitely times throughout the day where I'm able to work. If I've already gotten an assignment that's for the next day, I can work throughout the day to kind of, so, like, do the homework before like the actual evening time because I'll have more time then. Yeah, so generally, um, like this year, I've had about three hours of homework, um, which is about one hour per class. And sometimes teachers will even say, hey, don't spend too much time on this assignment. If it's getting to be too long, if you're spending more than an hour on it, send me an email. I'll understand. We can figure out how you can get it done and get you an extension on it. So I think um, it's, it has been about three hours and um, there's avenues and teachers are understanding if it takes you more or less. Than Thank you. Um, our next question. Is the student culture more competitive or collaborative? How would you describe the student culture in that way? Ruby, go ahead. Definitely hands down more collaborative. There's not a culture of, am I doing better than you? And like, who's getting better grades? It's more like, are you, like, people want to support each other and just see each other, like, succeed and enjoy what they're doing. So I just, I really believe that CSW cultivate, cultivates like good learners and like academic success through making students want to do their best, not through making students want to do better than other people, which personally is a much healthier attitude for me and I think for most people. Um, and it makes you want to contribute just for the sake of like learning and enjoying and and there's so many avenues for you to put your own personal flair into like a project that and like personalize a project like bring your personal interest into a class that you're not uh normally drawn to the topic um to make you want to succeed and it really makes classes that are even really really hard much more enjoyable and make you want to succeed in them awesome all right, here's a, here's a very CSW question. Um, if you could choose an animal that best represents CSW, what would it be? If you could choose an animal that best represents or describes CSW, what would it be? Fadilla. Um, a monkey, just because like, we're all like energetic and always moving, always into something, but also like, really smart yeah i guess i would say a chameleon not in the sense that it just like blends into whatever it's nearest but like every it can change into so many different colors and backgrounds and like i guess that's kind of how the cpsw community is it's like diverse like the community. 
Awesome. Uh, Ruby, what animal would you choose? I actually think that our mascot of the griffin fits us pretty well. It's pretty weird and funky and can fly and also is pretty ferocious and wild. And also, it's kind of a mythical creature. You didn't think there was a school that could respect its students this much, but there is. So it's the griffin. Awesome. So uh, I guess I would like to know what made you each choose CSW. Um, you may or may not have had multiple choices. Um, there are a lot of schools, especially in the Boston area. What made you choose to go to CSW? I guess one of the things that appealed to me the most was like, I was in control of like my education and what I wanted to learn with the mod system and choosing classes because I'm like the type of student, like if I don't find something like interesting or just like engaging for me like it'll be really hard for me to put my all and like feel motivated but like with the mod system and like teachers and the way classes are structured and set up it's really student oriented and personally like I love the fact that I like have a in what I get to do. Awesome thank you. Uh, Ryan what made you choose CSW? Um, so I think originally it was like a strong arts program because I'm really interested in performing arts. Um, but I think in the end, what really made me choose CSW was how welcoming the community was, especially on um, my revisit day when I came and my tour guide like introduced me to so many people and was so friendly and showed me around this beautiful campus and I just fell in love with it. What made me choose CSW, there are many reasons that have made me love it while I'm here, but what made me choose it was literally just looking through that course catalog and seeing like, oh, I don't just sit in like a year of general US history. Like I get to take US women's movement and US youth subcultures and US history of education and US history of incarceration. Like those courses I'm like they're like college level courses that are so niche and specific and that's what the mod system lets us to do and also passionate teachers putting their like own interests and and like we have students this year um I took um jailhouse nation is what the U.S. history incarceration class is called and um it's taught by Jermaine who's like literally I'm pretty sure like right now he's writing his PhD thesis on topics like directly related to that class. Like this is his specialty. And like he brought it to us with all his passion and, and then all those unique classes were like, Oh, I really want to take these and to have the opportunity to take so many throughout my time here um, was like, I got to take these classes. So that's what got me in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Jack, what made you choose CSW? Uh, I would say the main draws for me at first were definitely the mod system and how much of a say the students have uh, in what goes on on our daily lives. Uh, but also like the facilities I thought were really nice and just like the campus, like the campus was is completely beautiful. Uh, the Garthway is an amazing building. Uh, the Fit is a really nice athletic facility that I absolutely love. Um, and also I found that some of the other schools that I applied to were like very specified, like th uh, this school has the best math program and like everything else is a little bit weaker, but I felt that CSW was like um, sort of everything was equivalent in terms of how much emphasis they put on like each subject and how much money they spent in each department um, and just like the quality of each uh, department. Thanks, Jack. Jason, what made you choose CSW? Um, so definitely one of the main factors that made me decide to go to CSW was the mod system. And kind of, as I said before, just the ability to take so many different classes in so many different subjects. Um, for me, it just seemed like such a great opportunity to um, try so much new things, so many new things that I wouldn't have tried before and to kind of um, expand my, what I see in this world. Awesome. Well, 
Um, we've had a bunch of amazing questions. I know there were so many more questions that you all asked. Um, uh, we are over time, uh, so we're going to have to cut it short um, now. I want to thank um, our student panelists. I want to thank everyone for uh, coming and attending. Um, I also wanted to, to let you know that you have the ability to connect uh, with faculty and students one on one. Um, in the chat, we're going to put a link to a way that you can sign up to talk to um, a faculty or staff or student on any subject um, related to CSW. So um, if you still have questions, if you want to learn more, um, you can definitely email me. My email is in uh, the chat box as well, uh, jclark at csw.org. But you can also go uh, onto the link and sign up for one-on-one -on -one conversations with uh, a lot of the members of our uh, community. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, thank you students again. Um, and again, congratulations on your acceptance to CSW. We're really excited uh, to see you in the fall. Uh, so hope everyone has a, a healthy and safe evening. Thank you.